Hello and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are here in person and we are going to design the greatest fighter in the world. Should be an interesting conversation. We've oh, yeah. talked about this uh, virtually zero. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Apparently and we're going to put stuff in a pod and mix it up. Yeah, we're yeah, we're going to we're going to yeah. concoct a person like Frankenstein, but with more. Well, I don't know, maybe not. We'll maybe it'll out. just be we'll we'll just be Frankenstein. If you want to see all the things that we do as part of this endeavor that is Whistlekick, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find all kinds of stuff over there, links to all the things that we do, our projects, as well as our products. Yes, we have a store. It's one of the ways we pay the bills for this thingy that we got going on here. And if you use the code podcast, 15, it saves you 15%. Let's us know that the podcast leads to some sales. If you haven't been over there lately, please do. We're constantly updating things. I put new stuff. I put something new over there last week. So by the time this comes out, two, three weeks ago, so check it out. Just constantly trying to make improvements. Now the show gets its own website. Let's look at martialartsradio.com. We're bringing two shows each and every week, all under the heading of connecting, educating, and entertaining the traditional martial arts of the world. Now, if that means something to you, hopefully it does, because you're here, you've got a bunch of ways that you can help us out. Like I said, you can make a purchase. You could go to whistlekickprograms.com and grab one of the programs over there to make you stronger or faster, or better conditioned, or maybe you're listening to this in the future when we have other programs over there. Go check those out. You can follow us on social media. You can leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google or Facebook or anywhere else that takes reviews, uh, except for Yelp. I don't care about Yelp. <laughs> Yelp is stupid for, for our kind of business. Uh, or you can support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. We bring you exclusive content behind the scenes, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else, bonus episodes, audio, video. You get book drafts. You get exclusive access to me not exclusive but better access to me uh at some of those tiers i will train you personally try to give you value if you're gonna give of your money you should get some value out of it all right let's do this thing okay this was your this was your idea this was my idea okay I'm going into this cold when we talk about fighters and designing fighters you know by the time this comes out we will have had two how to fight episodes air mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. and those have been fun you know we did the first one on uh jeff speakman, jeff speakman from the movie from perfect weapon. perfect weapon yeah and the second one we did roadhouse and it's really got my wheels turning mm. you know we're we're taking this uh limited subset person how would we fight them but then you think of something like the matrix where neo just gets all this stuff uploaded to his brain and he's like and he knows every martial art and he's yep. amazing and not that training is that rapid but you can do that oh i have a gap in my in my fight game mm -hmm. how do i improve that you know let me go over here and train this with this person let me train this with this person oh i'm still you know not so great here let me go seek someone out who's really good at teaching that thing and get better. But what if you were to take a step back? You know, this is, this is a conversation that people have over drinks, uh, MMA has gotten big. And people seem to think like they have this perfect formula. Well, you take Muay Thai and you add BJJ and that's all you need. And sometimes people add one other thing, you know, karate or boxing or wrestling, and, and then, you know, they, they do better. I've, I've heard this conversation. And I'm not going to say that that's a bad approach. The question is, how do you design the best fighter? So is there a better approach? What do you think? It's a good question. You know, if you, you know, if you look at the UFC, for example, in the early, early, early days, it was submission. Mm -hmm. right that that's what won and so everyone was like i gotta get really good at submission and so for a number of years that's what the ufc was and then someone came in and it became well that that guy won and he didn't submit it was all about striking and so for the next number of years it became oh i've got to get my striking game up because mm -hmm. that was a deficit that people had and so the ufc for a number of years was just striking i mean not 
I'm generalizing. I'm sure. not, I know it's not exactly that. But you're, you're illustrating the point that there has been cycles correct. of what was focused. And then people came in that had a good grasp of striking and had a good grasp of, of submission stuff. And it kind of evolved. And they did what we're kind of talking about doing now, which is designing what would work best in a situation and designing a, the greatest fighters. They looked at the weaknesses they had and added what they needed to. Now, we're not necessarily talking about the best fighter to step into MMA or no, point sparring or anything. We're going to say in general. So let's, let's define that as across any number of rule sets or even non-rule mm -hmm. sets, you know, the street or UFC rules or point spark, whatever it is, if, if we were to think versatility, mm -hmm. I think that that is an important aspect to being a fighter. Yeah. Well... I can't imagine that being strong and fast is ever a disadvantage. I would agree. So we're talking about someone who spends time getting strong and getting fast. Uh, they're working on their ability to take and recover from damage mm -hmm. quickly, which again comes from being strong, being fast, being healthy. Cardio, I, huge. Yep. Should be huge. Yes. Yep. And, uh, you know, just a, a shout out to the fight conditioning program that we designed because most people don't understand cardio and how cardio plays into fight. Uh, go check that out. There's some video and there's some other stuff that explains that. Uh, go, go run eight miles and then step into any kind of intense hmm. combative situation and, and tell me if you feel prepared. <laughs> Not the same. No, there are different kinds of cardio. Um, balance. Mm -hmm. becomes important you know these these are pretty general things that i think most people are going to train indirectly but what about training them directly, directly. you know lifting weights mm -hmm. running sprints at the track uh flexibility getting you know recovery with massage acupuncture chiropractic you know that 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 whole thing there making sure that the body is as resilient as possible, I think is a really important part. You, we, if you dig in, each generation of fighters is usually one or two people that will be discussed as being, you know, able to take a lot of punishment. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, that episode of The Simpsons where Homer boxes. Oh, I seen that. No. His whole strategy is to just get punched in the face until the other guy gets tired. And, okay. and then he just pushes him over. <laughs> I think Mike Tyson does a guest on that episode, actually. Are you with me so far? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. So just general physical skill. Now, we're probably, size does matter. To some degree. The larger, the better. Yeah. There, there's no situation where, if we're talking about fighting, where being taller, stronger, faster, heavier is going to be a disadvantage in this context. I mean, if we're talking about weight classes, then, then yeah, it might be difficult to find somebody, yeah, yeah. but you know, I don't care how good I am. If I'm up against somebody who is six, six, three twenty, I'm, I'm not going to win. Yeah. I'm probably not going to, I'll carve out a small out of respect to myself. I'll car carve a small chance out of that for me, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm aware of that. Is there anything non-technique that we should dig into before I, we go there? I mean, I think else? could condi I mean, you might consider this technique, but uh, conditioning your body to absorb, not absorb, but to be able to take hits. I'm mm. thinking of like you know punching a makiwara to like strengthen up your hand, um, you know, or, or you know, kicking stuff that's really hard to kind of strengthen up your leg. You know, in Japanese martial arts, we'd call it kotikitai, like body conditioning, mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff. I guess you could consider that technique. It's it's really at the heart of it. It's priming the nervous system, not priming. It's um, training the nervous system to understand what that stimulus means, yeah. and that it is not necessarily that you are dying. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you anybody who who can remember the first time they were hit in the face, even if it wasn't full force, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's crippling because your body ah, I don't know what to do with this. Exactly. And there's something to be said for experience in that context, whether you're talking about 
you know, punching somebody in the face or getting a shot to the body, a shot to the head, right? It's that resilience, but it, it's more than that because it's not just physical damage. It's, it's the nervous system's mm -hmm. understanding of what that stimulus means. Okay, so technique, all okay. of them. <laughs> yes. The more you know, the better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that your skill in all of them is necessarily equal, but the more you know, the better. Because there's something to be said for surprise. Here's my illustration of that. If surprise did not matter, if only competency of technique mattered, mm -hmm. boxers would dominate MMA. Yeah, okay. Boxers have a handful of techniques. Mm -hmm. That's Four. true. And, and you got some variations on there, but you take a high level boxer, they know how to punch better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. They know how to punch, hook, right? Jab, straight, hook, uppercut. Those are the four primary. Everything else really is a variation on there. I'm not a boxer. If you're a boxer and you have issue with my description of boxing, I'm, I'm not going to defend it, but that is my very fundamental understanding of boxing as it has been taught to me. Boxers need more than boxing in MMA. Mm -hmm. And it's not just because of range. It's because of diversity. If you know that that person only has those four techniques, you can craft a pretty solid strategy even on the fly yeah, absolutely. to deal with that. So I would say boxing for one's punches. Mm -hmm. Best boxers are, best or best punch punchers are boxers. boxers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, kicking, you've got different kinds of kicking. Mm -hmm. You've got kicking to the head. That's probably Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Not super applicable in most fighting contexts. It's sure. generally pretty risky, but if you want some diversity, I would say you're training some of that. Yeah. Uh, kicks to the leg. It's probably Muay Thai, maybe Kyokushin, yeah, you know, similar mm -hmm. there. Um, if you want kicks to the body. Pick any number of karate. Yeah, I mean, pretty much any martial art yeah. teaches kicks to the body. Um, when it comes to grappling, it's jujitsu, whether we're, we're talking exclusively Brazilian jujitsu or we're incorporating some stand-up traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. or hapkido. There are only so many ways that the body's going to move before it doesn't want to go, right? And yeah. all of those grappling arts all applicable. Are, are applicable there. Mm -hmm. uh, wrestling deals with some things that- Body movement. That, that I think <laughs> are, are pretty valuable in, in terms of being able to close those gaps mm -hmm. very quickly in a way that I-, I now, I'm not a wrestler. I've never been a wrestler. My BJJ experience is about that big. I am not aware of non-wrestling grappling arts teaching that ability to so quickly close as a priority. Sumo. Hmm. Sumo is interesting. I wouldn't even consider sumo, but sumo makes sense because if we're talking about this person being really big mm -hmm. and really strong, and as soon as go, the first thing yeah. they need to close that distance. And sumo teaches you how to use your weight, your momentum as an advantage. I think that's a mm -hmm. great one. If you've never watched high level sumo, I highly encourage it. It's, Pe a, it's amazing to watch. People dismiss it because it's big fat people. And they assume that being a big fat person means you don't have any athletic skill. Oh, it's so far um, from the truth. Who was the gentleman we had on who did sumo? And he's promoted sumo events in this country. Uh, there was a hysterical video of him. Oh, I don't remember his name. That's disappointing to me. It was a really fun interview. But he's entered sumo competitions. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there was, I believe we linked video from that show notes page of him in a match. <laughs> he's smaller than I am. <laughs> in a match with someone who is not smaller than I am. It was fun. Uh, he obviously was okay with it because he yeah, sent yeah. it to us, but uh, you can check that out if you want to you go down that rabbit hole there. But that is an instance where another martial art where closing the gap yeah. is super important. Yeah, <clears throat> really, really important there. What else we got? Knees. Knees and elbows. Knees and elbows. I don't think there's anything better than Muay Thai Muay for Thai, that. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Um, 
I think the only other thing that becomes really relevant is the ability to move your, your movement, your head movement, your yeah. body movement, front, back, lateral movement. And, you know, you're going to get some of that in boxing. boxing yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to get some of that from, from pretty much any martial art. But I think the one aspect to martial arts that we, we haven't incorporated in this discussion is the idea of straights versus circles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most of the arts that we're talking about, even if, if Muay Thai, if, if, a, if it's an elbow, and we might think of that as being a circular technique, to me, that's still pretty much a straight technique. I'm taking my elbow, I'm putting it on your face or mm -hmm. wherever as directly as I can. But if we think about something like uh, any kind of Southeast Asian martial arts, you know, Sila, any kind of Eskrima, Kali, uh, or even a lot of Chinese martial arts, circles and the ability to move in circles, mm -hmm. not just your hands, your feet, but your whole body to move and to be more fluid, both to evade or to deflect, to absorb and, and um, reduce damage, I think is a, a good thing. Who it wouldn't would want that? For sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of my favorite drills that, that we did in karate were, you know, learning how to take a punch off center and just kind of go with it yep. and show that, you know, as long as you're, you're able to go with it at the right time, that a really solid punch becomes a much less solid punch, you know, things that would, you know, over a few inches, you know, they're going to break ribs and you're just like, mm -hmm. you know, and done right. If the person's not expecting it, you know, they're going to lose balance because they're, compensating they're expecting that they're going to get that opposite yeah, they're, force they're waiting to actually yeah. impact with something yeah uh what about mindset i think that covers all the technique stuff yeah yeah i, I would agree technique wise i think we're good so yeah i think mindset's the last part of it what do you have to be to be a good fighter you have to be a, i don't want to say crazy but you have to you have to be able to prioritize the end result over physical pain, physical mm -hmm. damage, right? Like there are, um, there are examples of fighters who, you know, somebody breaks their arm and they keep going, Yeah, you know, especially in grappling matches. Uh, that's where I've, I've heard it talked about. And I think that that's, I think that's nuts. That's not me. That's yeah. also why I'm not going to be the greatest fighter in the world, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no matter what matrix downloads pump into my brain yeah and and some of that might be adrenaline to some degree sure uh and you know they might feel it afterwards but but not everybody's able to do that you're right absolutely absolutely i think that there's a a work capacity and a priority on understanding that getting the job done matters and this is where i'm actually going to suggest something a little bit atypical is crossfit mm. okay. so if, if you follow high-level CrossFit, competitive CrossFit, you see a lot of people getting good at CrossFit who come out of farming communities. I could can, I can see because that. Because there's an attitude that the work has to get yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. And so they bring that attitude of the work's got to get done mm -hmm. into that training domain. And they just get really good. There's something they're able to go to that dark place is something people often talk about. And I don't have that. Hmm. I, I was never great at CrossFit, even in the early days when nobody was doing CrossFit. I was still always at my best. I was just kind of okay. Yeah. Because I couldn't go to that dark place the way most people. Now, maybe in a fight I could, but if you had to, if I had to, but people, others are better able to turn that off and mm -hmm. on. And I think that there's something there. Um, and I think along those lines, maybe a why. You know, think about like the Rocky movies, you know, yep. Rocky's able to do what he does, Million Dollar Baby, you know, any of these fight movies, there's a why. Yeah. People are down and out. They've got to get through whatever this is. I don't care how good of a fighter you are. If you don't have a purpose, yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably reason. not going to be a great fighter. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? No, I don't think so. That's, think? that's pretty intensive that's, list. Though. That's, there's a lot there. So if you want to be the best fighter in the world, just go do Everything. all the things that we told you to do. Uh, and I'll see you in 50 years when At you're how, when you're however old and uh, nobody will give you a fight. <laughs> nobody will, you won't get any professional Because as, as we've discussed before, martial arts helps make nonviolent people. Right.
I think this is an interesting mental exercise. And I think that the extension of this would be to take a look at yourself. Mm. If you were to take you as you are at this age, physical capacity, the training you've had, what would be the next thing that you would plug in? I've always said that I see martial arts kind of like trivial pursuit, right? And, and the first thing you train in of any substantive time is the biggest piece of that pie, the yeah. biggest wedge. Yeah. And then as you add more training disciplines, schools, et cetera, you're rounding that out. It's never full, but what would be your second biggest trivial pursuit piece? You know, for me, it's probably Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. How about you? For me, it's karate, karate, karate. Really? My, the, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I have done other martial arts. I've studied some judo. I've studied some jujitsu um, and some Aikido. But the bulk of my training has been three different styles of karate. Maybe I didn't ask my question right. Okay. What would you, what oh, could what you would add? Do, oh, yeah, what yeah. Add? What would you, what would oh, you stack? I, I would add more, I would add I would want to get better at jujitsu and more ground stuff, whether it's BJJ or, or traditional Japanese jujitsu. But because both mo, the bulk of my training is karate, I mean, I would want to branch out more into into that type of stuff. So there you go. There's a fun mental exercise. I I hope that was helpful for you, and I hope that you will think about it. Think about rounding yourself out. Think about being a better martial artist, even if you're never going to be a fighter, even if the idea of fighting appalls you, still understanding where the gaps in your training and in your game are is a really relevant exercise. If you're an instructor, this would be a wonderful opportunity for a class discussion. Mm. You know, a lot of schools have mat chats for kids. Yeah. I don't know very many adult classes that do it. And I think it's really valuable. Anything to add before we roll out? No, I think that's All good. Right. Thanks for watching or listening. If you have a topic suggestion, guest suggestion, let us know. There's a form at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com while you're over there. You can also sign up for the newsletter, check out all the episodes we've ever done. Keep in mind, we have photos and videos and links and transcripts, all kinds of good stuff over there. If you like the episodes that we do, you can go so much deeper on them if you check those out. Uh, sometimes we take those transcripts collect them, do other things with them, throw them into a book, and you can grab those at amazon.com. You can also support us in a variety of ways. You can make a purchase at whistlekick.com. You can grab a program at whistlekickprograms.com. You could tell people about things that we do. That's free. Leave reviews or support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. We're going to give you back whatever you're willing to contribute a month. We're going to give you back far more than that in value. So go check that out and you'll see what I'm talking about. We're good. If you want to email us, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, our social media is at whistlekick everywhere. Thank you for your time today. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.